cool part about this is you can make this all in one, I was gonna say giant bowl, but this is just like a regular bowl. We're gonna take one cup of oatmeal. I like to do the oatmeal first because I feel that then nothing gets stuck to the bottom of your bowl. Then we're gonna do our peanut butter. But first I'm gonna spray a, what is this? A measuring cup with a little bit of cooking spray just to make sure that the peanut butter comes out super easy. Then we're gonna need two thirds of a cup of peanut butter. I threw mine in the microwave for about like 35 seconds. And then that way <laughs> we can measure it and it just makes it so much easier. Whenever you're measuring anything that's like super sticky and runny, okay, I might have to pop it in for a little bit longer, but whenever you're measuring something that's super sticky and runny, even like if you're measuring honey or maple syrup, always spray the container so that that way it literally just pours out. And this one I scraped out, so just, you know, you might have to just respray again or just use a better cooking spray. And I know somebody will ask if you are allergic to peanuts, you can do, I guess if you're allergic to peanuts, you might be allergic to almonds too, but you can swap this out for another nut butter. And I know they also make sunflower seed butter, you know, so not from nuts. Uh, so you can definitely use that. And if you wanted to make this, I guess technically it wouldn't be that healthy, but if you wanted to use cookie butter, oh man enjoy them for me if you are making them with cookie butter so good then we're gonna do half of a cup of ground flax seed now flax seeds come let me see if i can try there's gonna be no way that you guys are actually gonna be able to see that but they come whole and they look like like little tiny seeds now you can either use ground flax seed which is what i'm using also sometimes called like flax seed meal i don't know why they call it that or you can use whole flax seeds. It, the whole flax seeds are nice because they give you like an element of crunch. Also, I definitely said if you wanted to swap any nut butter, if you wanted to use crunchy instead of creamy, you absolutely could. You might need to use maybe a tiny bit more, like a tablespoon or two more, just because of the texture, but mmm, delicious. And I know that flaxseed, especially even ground flaxseed, aren't something that people typically have. So if you wanted to use chia seeds or pumpkin seeds or shredded coconut, really, it, since this is a dry ingredient in here, it's just adding to everything. So if you wanted to swap it for something else or even ground up nuts or something, it it's really, really interchangeable. Like this recipe, it's just basic. Stick with the wet ingredients and then add the same amount of whatever other item you would like. So if you don't like, we're gonna add chocolate chips next. If you don't like chocolate chips, feel free to add raisins or something else. But if you don't like chocolate chips, I don't think we can be friends. Then we need half a cup of chocolate chips. These are just the ones from all these semi-sweet or dark chocolate or even milk chocolate. It's really up to you. Um, that looks like half a cup now. And for a tiny bit of sweetness, we're gonna use, if it will come out, we're gonna use two tablespoons of some honey. If you do not like honey or just don't have honey, feel free to use maple syrup too. And yes, real maple syrup, not that pancake syrup. And that's it. Now, all we're gonna do is just mixy mixy. And I feel like the peanut butter being heated up makes it a lot easier too. So if you guys are wondering, why is there no intro to this video? Maybe this is your first video you're watching and you're like, what does she look like? One, go watch my other videos. But two, it is also 10.50 as I'm filming this, but we were just craving something sweet, but semi-healthy in a way. I mean, these are all really good ingredients. And I think, no, my chocolate chips were semi-sweet. I was gonna say, I think they were dark chocolate, but we can just pretend. And you always can double, or even triple, quadruple this recipe. This is actually my husband's recipe. There was a time, especially when I was pregnant with baby Roman, that, can I still call him a baby even though he's almost two? <laughs> Somebody let me know. But there was a time when I was pregnant that Brad would make these every other day. Like sometimes he would make them every single day. And it got to the point where we were just making like four times this amount, like gigantic, gigantic mixing bowls. Oh my goodness. Of course, I mean, having food made for you is a lot better than having to make it yourself, but these are so good. And I know a lot of us are still Zooming a lot for work and uh, video conferencing is so hard sometimes, but it's really easy to have these in the refrigerator because that is where they stay. You can leave them on the counter, but I would leave them on the counter for maybe about two days. And after that, if they even last two days, because these are really good. This makes 12 decent sized balls, but I'm gonna throw this in the refrigerator for about 10, 15 minutes just to kind of let everything 
kind of form up and let that peanut butter reharden. But if you didn't want to roll them into balls and you wanted these to be like protein bars instead of bites, you could take a, what do you call this? What is that tray I'm looking for? You can take any type of baking tray or even like a Tupperware container, press it flat, and then the next day, just cut it with a little knife. Or if you are a savage like me, just dig in. Oh, so good. Then you just roll them into balls and you are good to go. Keep them in a little storage container and they will last in your fridge for a couple of weeks if they even last that long because these will be gone tonight. I can't wait.